Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, students and uh, colleagues. Uh, today we are starting a project management series of lectures. Uh, this is basically uh, the course I have been teaching to the uh, master's students and uh, graduate students in different universities. Uh, this course is basically comprised of uh, 14 or 15 lectures and as a matter of fact, uh, this is also including a complete uh, understanding about the project management body of knowledge, which is the uh, Project Management Institute of uh, uh, United States, uh, which gives a holistic approach to the uh, project management as a discipline. Uh, so today we will start with an overview of what project management is and how these two words of project and management makes a new discipline and what are the strong attributes of the uh, projects which we normally see in uh, different projects. And then uh, in the next uh, almost 12 or 14, uh, 13 lectures, we will discuss the various knowledge areas and the strengths of uh, uh, various knowledge areas and how this is, uh, these knowledge areas are important for the uh, project management. Well, this is the, uh, the picture of my old university where I've been, I've been vice chancellor for almost uh, four years from 2014 to 2018 before joining at Karakoram International University, the City University of Science and Information Technology. Uh, what in fact project is, uh, there can be a lot of these uh, uh, definitions, but uh, the perspective of the project definition may change from person to person, uh, from project to project and from place to place. But there are some common attributes which we normally see in, a, in, a, in every project. That is a temporary endeavor to create a unique product or service. So this is the most commonly uh, adopted project uh, definition by the Project Management Institute of America. Uh, a unique one-time effort bound by cost, time, and resources, that is technical performance, and has defined objectives to satisfy the customer needs. Project is an undertaking that in having definite uh, objectives and specific beginning and ending points, limited budgets, and defined scopes. Sometimes we may call it a sum of uh, certain activities and tasks required to be performed in a specific period of time with human and non-human resources for specified objectives. So uh, uh, if we just look at this uh, various definitions of the project, uh, uh, we can see that uh, it covers some very important attributes of the projects uh, generally uh, covered under uh, different uh, uh, projects. But we, what we commonly see in all the, uh, all the uh, project is that uh, there is always a limited allocated budgets, that the budget is constrained uh, and there is no uh, unending budgets allocated to the projects. That there is a scheduled time that we have to complete the project within a given time uh, and this is definitely the spirit of the project also uh, and then we have uh, some technical performance or scope which has been approved by the uh, financing authority or for the funding authority or the uh, client and then uh, uh, we finally have that we don't have to change the culture of the existing organization because we have to perform and we have to develop the projects and we have to execute the projects within the given uh, uh, culture of the university or with the organizations. Uh, project management, uh, basically we uh, see that management is the process of planning, organizing, staffing, controlling and leading. And if we just look at the objective of the management, normally we say that the uh, object of the management is to uh, certainly uh, organize the resources of uh, uh, an organization in an efficient and effective way. And that would mean that uh, when we say the efficient manner, that would mean to have less input and more output or 
at least the productivity or the uh, the uh, output per unit of input must be uh, possibly maximum. And when we go to the effectiveness, then definitely effectiveness would mean that we should also at the same time try to bring the desired results. Uh, please remember that efficiency uh, without getting the desired results cannot be uh, an, an effective project management. So we have to be uh, taking care of both sides that at one side we have to save the resources. And at the other hand, we also have to ensure that the desired results are achieved. Uh, when we combine the project management as two words, that becomes a discipline. And uh, we go to, again, the Institute, uh, Project Management Institute of America, which has given a very a clear definition like the art of directing and coordinating the human and non-human resources throughout the life of the project by using modern management techniques to achieve the predetermined objective of scope, cost, time, quality, and participants' satisfaction. Uh, when we look at the, uh, and we will discuss this later on, maybe in the second or third uh, lecture, at how the government sector in Pakistan in, uh, is looking after the project management, and you see that the planning and development department, planning development and reforms department is mainly having this responsibility to review, to approve and review the projects. But normally, uh, before the ta project is started, we have the feasibility study PC2, and then we have the project proposals, which is PC1, our project digest. And then this, once the project is started, then we go for the monitoring, that is PC3, our monitoring reports, and we have to see the monitoring both on monthly and quarterly basis after every three months. And then we may have the annual reports, uh, progress reports. And then once the project is completed, uh, soon after the completion, we have to submit the completion report, and that is reflected in the PC4 a document of the project. And once the project is go going to spend one year after the completion, then we have to see the immediate effects of the impacts of the project uh, through the PC5. Uh, we sometimes also use the PC6, but uh, this has not been very frequently used by the government departments, but definitely we are interested to see the long-term effects of the projects in the next five years after the completion of project, then definitely we go for the uh, project uh, uh, assessments uh, or project uh, impact assessment uh, through the PC6. Uh, this is just telling us that how the project management has been very effectively uh, improving the project uh, performance. For example, uh, in 1995, uh, there was 35 1% uh, failure of the software projects, but in 1998, it uh, increased to 46%. Uh, 53% of the project cost uh, goes by 1.9% of the original cost estimates, and uh, then there is an increase. So this slide is just telling us that how the three important attributes of the projects in terms of cost, time, and quality, our scope has been changed uh, over the years uh, based on the survey. Uh, the project uh, is different the operations because operations are normally uh, uh, the routine matters, for example, if I'm a teacher and uh, I'm, uh, uh, my job is to deliver the lectures, then definitely it's an operation which is uh, uh, part of my uh, normal activities. Uh, but if I'm going for a teacher training program, uh, then it can be thought as a project because it must have its own budget, time limitation, and scope. So the operations uh, uh, are... Uh, just like projects, but they uh, have some certain very uh, distinguished uh, differences. Uh, for example, commonly the projects are performed by people. Uh, the resources are always uh, limited in the uh, project operations. Uh, the projects must be planned, executed, and controlled very carefully. And then when we go for the uh, operation, uh, main include activities such as financial management, continuous manufacturing, product distribution, and so on. A uh, project may include activities such as developing a new product or service, effecting the uh, change in structure, staffing, and style of any organization, and developing and acquiring a new and modified information systems. So uh, the operations, I mean, as, a, as a matter of fact, can be part of the projects and vice versa. Now, we say the project is temporary. Uh, it doesn't mean that the project has to be very short in duration because it can be even 10 years project, but 
temporary uh, would always mean that there is an ending point for the projects and uh, uh, we uh, cannot continue projects indefinitely. Uh, temporary does not mean that the uh, project is short in duration, uh, but the duration is certainly finite or uh, limited because uh, normally it cannot be uh, afforded. Now, uh, in the uh, fundamental definition of the Project Management Institute, we also uh, discuss that the project or the end result of the project must be unique in terms of service or products or solutions. And uh, uh, unique does not mean that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, which may not exist before, but definitely it should have a unique features. For example, if we are dealing with a construction of thousand new houses, then definitely each project is uh, unique in terms of its location, in terms of its floor, in terms of its individual expectations, in terms of the people who will be using it. So definitely the project uh, are, end, end results are always unique. Uh, so we have some rules in the projects, then there are some tips and tools, then there are some techniques uh, we are using uh, together to develop the work products, our end results, our deliverables. Now these are uh, just telling us some of the fundamental uh, uh, project stages, and if we just divide the project into three uh, basic stages that we have to do a lot of activities before starting the project, and that is uh, the pre-project phase in which we define a lot of rules, a lot of resources, and we also understand the project uh, attributes. And once the project is approved, uh, or otherwise to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, be implemented, then we go for the implementation stage. And in the public sector, once the project is approved by the appropriate forum or statutory forum, then we normally say that the project has been administratively approved and then we issue the administrative approval, which is a document to advise to start the projects. And once the project is started, the most important part is the planning, which is the first and the most important that once we initiate the project, we do the planning and then we, based on that planning, we implement. And while we are implementing the projects, we are also adjusting, monitoring and adjusting, monitoring, controlling and adjusting to any changes which are placing, taking place in the projects. And once the project is uh, going to be completed, then we go for evaluation. And we have, I have already submitted that we go for the PC board submission. And once the project is uh, completed and it is handed over or phased out to the client, then the project team may celebrate the success of the projects. This is just uh, telling us the triple constraints of the dashboard of the project that we already are uh, constrained by the scope, uh, by the cost, and by the time. And sometimes we include the uh, performance also as part of the scope. So this is the dashboard uh, uh, regarding the performance of the project, which we would like to see uh, all the time. And as a matter of fact, the project manager is uh, somehow constrained, are limited, are surrounded by these three constraints. Uh, again, uh, we have already discussed that you have to control, uh, just like a dashboard of motor uh, or a car, which is telling you about the fuel, about the speed, about the uh, temperature, and maybe about the humidity and environmental uh, attributes. And when you are traveling on a highway, uh, you have to be consistently looking at the dashboard to see that there is uh, no shortage of the fuel and uh, the temperature is not... Uh, going very high and uh, again the speed is not going beyond the limits. So same is the case with the dashboard of the project that you all the time have to be very carefully monitoring the time, cost and quality or scope of the project. Uh, another very important area is the project stakeholder management and uh, the stakeholder are uh, different kinds of people uh, are uh, groups which can influence the project directly and indirectly, maybe positively or negatively. So you have to be having a very strong engagement with the stakeholders uh, when you are doing the projects. And later we will discuss how can we uh, improve the stakeholder management. Now the key stakeholders uh, in the projects can be the project manager, the customer or the end user, 
the uh, performing organizations which are working with you, uh, your own team, your line departments, then the sponsors are funding agency, and then uh, finally the project team members, which are uh, your internal stakeholders. Uh, this is just telling you the uh, uh, the cycle that how the stack, stakeholder management can be done. Uh, this is a very uh, a stepwise approach that you are dealing with the stakeholders. Uh, the first and the most important thing is that you identify uh, and recognize the stakeholders and they are the people, uh, the communities, the groups uh, which can positively or negatively affect the performance and the objectives of the project. And once you uh, identify these uh, groups or people, then you go to the uh, analyze the contribution and commitment and support uh, that how different stakeholders can support you. And then you plan some activities uh, uh, which we uh, want to do so that we can ensure commitments from uh, different uh, stakeholders. And then you uh, uh, execute the activities and then you monitor and see that how the activities are being done. and. What are the results we uh, can then improve based on that and feedback system is then coming to you uh, to further improve your uh, uh, stakeholder management process. Another very important influence of the uh, project is to have the project uh, uh, organizational influences. Uh, the decision that what kind of organization is suitable for the project would depend definitely on the culture. And it will also depend uh, uh, on the support from the executive management and senior management. So there can be different uh, organizational structures. We will discuss this in the uh, human resource part of the uh, project management course. This is uh, just, just uh, typically telling us about a matrix organization in which we have uh, the top management and under the top management we have the uh, functional divisions and under each division then you have some projects and for each project you have a project manager and these uh, project managers are then working with the uh, different functional organizations and ultimately connected to the uh, top positions through the uh, different team uh, leads. This is just telling you uh, project management organization for uh, uh, power project. Uh, that there is always at the top you have a vice president in engineering and under the engineering there are three major uh, groups who are working like structural engineering and then you have the mechanical engineering department electrical and then with each uh, department then you might be having some uh, projects and these projects are then working uh, uh, together uh, I think this will be, uh, we will leave uh, to later to the, uh, to the uh, project uh, human resource management because at this time uh, you will not be maybe very, uh, very uh, familiar with the structure, but definitely the matrix uh, uh, organization says that for each, uh, for each project we have a project manager and the uh, different uh, functional departments are providing supports to them. So if the project managers are very strong in their authority and their uh, powers, then definitely it's a strong matrix. And if uh, they are just having a coordination role with the land departments or the functional departments, then it is a weak matrix. But in between the two, uh, we are trying to balance the roles uh, and the responsibilities and the powers of the project managers and the uh, functional managers, which will ultimately take us to the uh, balanced matrix uh, organizations. Uh, we need a lot of uh, skills uh, to deal with the projects. For example, uh, we have to be very strong in uh, disciplines like computer programming, law, statistics, probability theory, logistics, supply chain management, and personnel. Uh, but some of the common areas where we would like to acquire very good skills are leading, communicating, negotiating, problem solving, influencing, and so on. Uh, 